strokes are categorized into hemorrhagic or ischemic. Hemorrhagic strokes involve blood leakage into the cerebral matter, whereas ischemic strokes are the result of compromised perfusion of the brain. The majority of strokes, however, are ischemic. An ischemic stroke is defined as a sudden loss of blood supply to an area of brain resulting in a corresponding loss of neurological function. To assist understanding how the position of an ischemic stroke manifests clinically, knowledge of the vessels supplying the brain and their territories is useful to know. The blood supply to the brain is through two main arteries, the internal carotid arteries which run the anterior circulation to the brain and the vertebral arteries which run the posterior circulation to the brain and medulla. Both of these pathways fuse to create a network which supplies the brain called the circle of Willis. Here is a cerebral vascular system arteriogram. With the major vessels labelled, note that the vertebral artery responsible for the posterior circulation branches off the subclavian. The common carotid arteries ascend towards the brain where they differentiate into internal and external carotid arteries. External carotid artery supplies the face, whereas the internal carotid artery supplies the anterior circulation of the brain. In regards to the posterior circulation, the subclavian arteries become the vertebral arteries which meet to form the basilar artery, forming the posterior circulation. Here you can see a bifurcation of the common carotid artery. This is a 3D image of the circle of Willis. And here is an arteriogram of the circle of Willis. This is the classic image of the circle of Willis. And this diagram shows the territories of blood supply of the cerebral arteries. The Bamford classification system, also known as the Oxford classification system, is the most commonly used classification system for ischemic stroke. It is a purely clinical score, not utilizing imaging. There are four categories, total anterior circulation, stroke or tax, partial anterior circulation stroke or PAX, posterior circulation syndrome, POX, and lacuna syndrome or LAX. So total anterior circulation syndrome is a large cortical stroke affecting the middle and anterior cerebral artery territories. To diagnose it, all three of the following must be present unilateral weakness and or sensory deficit of face, arm and leg, homonymous hemi and opia, and higher cerebral dysfunction such as dysarthria. A partial anterior circulation stroke is a less severe form of tax. It has the same criteria points as tax, but in order to make a diagnosis, two of the three points must be met. Posterior circulation syndrome. Now we know that the posterior blood circulation to the brain begins with the subclavian arteries, which then become the vertebral arteries, which then converge to become the basilar artery. The basilar artery itself has several branches that supply various areas of the medulla. These are the pontine arteries, superior cerebellar arteries, pica and ica. As such, we would expect the criteria for POX to include cerebellar and brainstem problems. One of the following need to be present in order to make a diagnosis of POX. Cerebellar or brainstem syndrome such as ataxia, nystagmus, vertigo, loss of consciousness or isolated homonymous hemianopia. 
Lacuna syndrome. Lacunes historically were used to describe a small cavity that remains after a stroke heals. Lake refers to the liquid of liquefactive necrosis of the brain. Lacuna infarcts are subcortical strokes, are small and occur in the brain due to cerebral small vessel disease. Cerebral small vessel disease are a group of pathological processes with various causes affecting the small vessels of the brain. They are responsible for stroke, dementia, mood disturbances. The cause of the condition, however, is not understood completely. One of the following points have to be met in order to make a diagnosis of lax. Unilateral weakness or sensory deficit or arm, face or leg in the arm, face or leg or all three. A, a pure sensory stroke or ataxic hemiparesis. These are the references used in this presentation. And that was the different types of stroke. If you have any questions, please do leave them in the comment section below. Thanks again for watching.